Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Louis D'Souza here. Today is Monday, February the 4th, 2019. It is 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. in London and Sydney, Australia. It's 12 midnight, or yeah, 12 midnight. No, 12. Do I have it wrong? Yes, 12 midnight. That's right. I get confused sometimes. That's okay. It, it's, it's the beginning of the week. I'm allowed to be confused for a moment. Anyway, thank you for joining us for another uh, edition of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we are starting the week off with uh, an interesting little project that Louis had us do for the week. And I'm going to be curious to see uh, what anyone might have come up with who is listening to the live stream today. But I have to say, Louis, I, the dog did not eat my homework. I actually got mine done. I, I, like I told you before <laughs> the show, I, I kind of cheated a little bit because I went to one great source. But nevertheless, I did my homework, so I'm ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Excellent, Walt. I'm so, glad so how you doing? I mean, so it has been a good weekend, a good week for you? Ah, fantastic. Thanks. It was my daughter's birthday, so oh. we had a, a real festive weekend, and uh, I had family around, and it was, it was a lot, a lot of fun. I really enjoy having family around. That's great. That's really good. Yeah, that's how you know you're having a good time when you're feeling good and having a good time. Straightforward, really. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any news to report. There, there's nothing really new going on. Um, I mean, is there anything new you're in? If not, if there's nothing really new going on, say let's just go right into the topic because we usually do the chit chat, but I don't know of anything to chit chat about this morning. So let's just go for it. <laughs> uh, chit chat. Um, yeah, it, it was fun watching my my daughter have sleepovers with her friends here at home. And, <laughs> oh, that's cute. And, and and the noise and the and the fun that they're all having. It's it's just really oh, exciting yeah. to to look at that young energy coming in and. Yes. And the lack of resistance and the just the fire. Aren't kids wonderful the for place? that? Yeah. I mean, kids are just so, they're, they're so blatantly, bluntly honest about how they're feeling. And when they're feeling good, it just flows right out of them. It's wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. yeah especially my, my three-year-old. She's a, she's a live wire. <laughs> she's especially <laughs> expressive, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's interesting how when she does get frustrated or angry, it never lasts long. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a good it's thing. A really, That's very good. It's a great thing to watch. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a good example of what we should be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. So, cool. okay, so I did so my homework. Quotes, so quotes. so what do I do with my homework? I, I've got it, okay, I've got my homework done, but what do I do with it? I don't know what to do yet. Well, if you got it wrong, I'm going to give you... Um, uh, we, we, we're going to give you some corporal punishment. No! <laughs> <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> uh, it was quite interesting because when I was at school, we, uh, corporal punishment was all the rage. And, uh, um, I, I was very thankful for it. And I was very grateful for it because writing 5,000 lines of I should not um, <laughs> did my head in and a, and, and a little bit of a smack on my bum very quickly. Was, uh, <laughs> what did that? What exactly nice. did that accomplish? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That was actually on the good side. Well, just, just that the the the, um, the the punishment was swift. Ah, in other words, that's was, all uh, it accomplished. That's all. Okay. All right. Well, I, I can kind of sort of long, see long, that one. long and painful writing things about what I don't want, or um, you know, I must not. Mm-hmm. This, 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 this yes. five thousand times and just did my head in. So but five thousand uh, ways to say the same thing over and over again about how your responsibility is to please someone else. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Well, so, that pretty much summarizes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were talking a lot about this weekend to to my brother. I was talking about um, how how people who who tell you. That you're selfish, just want you to do things their way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it was it was really getting to the core of all that. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I, I I become I've become very very interested in the last year or two about just how I mean I, I've been interested in this word for a long time since my twenties. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've been I've been particularly interested in the last year or two about just how hypocritical the usage of the word selfish usually is. In that, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, I mean, pe- the people who use the word selfish invariably will claim that they are not acting selfishly. And, yes. that, and that they're acting in the interest of anything else except for themselves. 
And yet they're the ones who are most selfish in the entire formula. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> uh, I'm just so struck by that. Mm. But the anyway, thing is really, really weird. Yes. So what are we so, going to do? What are we doing with these Give me memes? a quote. Give me a quote. You what? want a quote? Oh, all right. Well, I can give you a quote. That's easy enough. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, by the way, Siraj says, thank you for suggesting The Silent Flute. He said it was an awesome yeah, movie. Yeah, great movie. My, count, my, my crown chakra is activated now after seeing the movie, he says. Now, I'd, lo- I'd, I'd, I'd love to have you on live so we can chat. Surat, um, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? I'd just love to know. Yeah. Because I, I want to know what it's up. like to have your crown chakra open. What does it mean to you? <laughs> that, that would interest me. Okay. That would be a good topic. Well, while he's deciding um, whether he's going to do that, I'll give you my first meme. This is Now, I, I, I did say that I went to a great source, and the great source is Joel Elston, who probably publishes about a half dozen to a dozen memes every day. So whenever I need a good meme. Memes. What, what does the word meme mean? What does meme mean? Meme, meme, meme. Uh, it mean it, it memes. <laughs> it <laughs> memes. <laughs> no, as far as I know, a meme is a a quote of some kind that is usually associated with a graphic that gets passed around on social media. So ah, is that what a meme is? Yeah. Wow, I'm enlightened. Yep. Ha-ha, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, this one is a quote from a woman named Virginia Satir. She says, "Life is not the way it is supposed to be. It is the way it is. The way you cope with it is what makes the difference." Mm-hmm. Okay. So w- when I'm looking at quotes, th- there's a few things I wanted to just start off and mention about them. Okay. One is they're often around for a feel-good factor. Yes. Okay. Um, another one is they, they generally have bits and pieces of the puzzle, but never the whole picture. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> okay. Um which are great in wetting, wetting the appetite, but um, also incomplete, as mm-hmm. in satisfying the whole. Right. Um, the other aspect is when I'm looking at a quote, I'm looking at an aspect of is it focused on what it wants more than it is focused on what it doesn't want? Mm, yeah. Okay. So the, the, those are some of the criteria and things that I look at. And then I break it down based on the law of attraction and my understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then I, I talk about how I found it. So mm. let's go through it step by step. You want to just do the first line again, well? So the first line is, life is not the way it is supposed to be. Okay, that's focused on what you don't want, yeah. Right. Second line, it is the way it is. It is the way it is, yeah. Present is what it is. Mm-hmm. And if you focus on it, you get more of it, yeah. Mm. And then the way you cope with it is what makes the difference. So coping with it is focused really on what you don't want or want. It depends how you look at it. Mm. Um, but it's not painting a clear picture of where you want to go. No. It's hinting at it. It's, hint- it it's hinting at it. Yeah. But it's not, it's not quite saying don't focus on the, the, your reality because if you do, you're just going to get more of it. And unless it's a great reality, then you can focus on it. But if it's not a great reality, you really don't want to be spending much time focusing on where you're at. But you really want to be focusing where you're going. So – yeah, looking looking at that, um, Louis, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down <laughs> on that quote. It's I like would say it's about, a, it's about a, a 40, 40, 44 and 60 against. Okay. All right. Jet, next. Uh, well, actually, we've got one from Sarah, and it's a very simple one. Be happy yeah. with nothing, and you'll be happy with everything. Um, okay, so... The, the big thing about this quote is its simplisticness, which doesn't fill in the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's completely accurate. All right. But it doesn't satisfy me because it's incomplete. Interesting thing about why or how. Or... Com- completeness is, is an interesting point because a meme is making a single point. I, I can't ever recall having uh, a meme shown to me or presented to me that had multiple points in it. So it's always about one point. And, and the reason I say that's interesting is when we discuss topics, we don't rely mm. on just one point. We try to explore the various points so that we can understand the entire picture. So a yeah, meme yeah. can actually never give you a large enough piece of the picture. It's got to show you a little tiny piece of it. 
Well, you'll be quite interested in all the Abram Hicks memes if you start having a look at them. A lot of them are okay. damn long. <laughs> well, yes, they are. And, and they're the, and they are the really exception long. to the rule. They are definitely the exception of the rule. Because I said the rule is, is usually only one point. They're usually yeah, making about yeah. five or six in about, yeah. uh, you know, a paragraph and a half. So <laughs> you're right. They're, and, and, it's quite and, different. And, and I like that about them. I really do. Yeah. Um, it, it, they're, they're usually quite complete. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I didn't ask for one of them is because I really will say 100% of the time, except maybe for somebody who shortened it too short. Yeah. Okay, which yeah. means it's incomplete again. Right. Um, but m- most of the Abram Hicks quotes or, or the official ones that come from Esther every day um, are, are pretty lengthy and, and, and very, very, very accurate. So um, I haven't been able to pull apart anything in the Abram Hicks teaching yet, so, you know. Maybe one day I'll be able to see something that I, clearly that I don't like about it. But um, <laughs> uh, it, it is a little it, unnerving, it's, it's, isn't it? I mean, because we're so used to having stuff to pick from. Like, well, I kind of like this part, but I don't really like that part. And then yeah, I know, no, <laughs> right? It's really it's a bit disconcerting about any teaching being that accurate. Yeah. all the time. Like, what, what am I overlooking here? Am I missing something? With not one word that it said. <laughs> I disagree with. It's it really scary. Absolutely. Um, Once you get what they're saying, I mean, in the beginning, you could quite easily, you know, rip them to pieces mm -hmm. because of your lack of understanding of where they're coming from. Well, exactly. Um, Exactly. But once you get it, you you kind of, you you kind of corralled into their their way of thinking. You don't, because it is so correct, accurate, logical, etc. Yeah, should we go on to the next one? Yeah, uh, we've got a couple of them here. One from Sarah and one from Siraj. And let me just copy Siraj's while I read to you Sarah's. Sarah says, sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing... Hi, Sarah and Siraj and Nasha and everybody everybody else. Absolutely. Sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing that will set you free. Run that by me again. I'm going to ask you maybe to repeat quotes again and again. That's right. Sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing that will set you free. Hmm. 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 So, it's so incomplete, I want to puke. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, I just want to so, thank you for, for basically insulting Sarah with the quote that she brought to us. <laughs> uh. Sarah, every subject's to subject. You can take it for what, what I'm saying as a, an insult, or you can take it as a as an expansion of clarity. Okay, <laughs> please take the latter. <laughs> you might want to change the thing about puking, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna stick with There's puking. certain quotes like that that really get my goat. <laughs> Let's repeat it so we can go through it. <laughs> Okay, so you want me to read it again. It says, sometimes what you're most afraid of doing hmm. is the very thing that will set you free. Okay, so if, if you, you've just stumbled across, across this quote, okay, I really, really, really hate public speaking. It's going to set me free? God, no ways. I'm going to rather run away and hide. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not encouraging me to understand the logic that Abram Hicks teaches. I mean, it, it's... They, they're trying to point to this. They're trying to point to when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's what this is trying to point to. Right. All right. But it's it's not getting there for me. It's not. It's not. It's not. It, 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 I don't know. A lot of people kind of think those things are cute, but it just really annoys me. <laughs> so there's not there's not much else to say about it. It, it. It's really trying to get to the clarity of when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. So what, once you once you've crack the nuts of public speaking, which is not going to happen overnight, yeah, and you've got out there, you've gone to Toastmasters like I did, and, and you practiced, and you started talking about yourself as you do first in Toastmasters, um, which is a relatively easy subject, um, and then you move on to, you know, doing um, talks about uh, certain subjects, and then you do talks about, um, talks talks with, with, uh, accessories like um, a projector um, and, and, a, and a clicker and all those kind of things and, and um, PowerPoint presentations. And then you go on to, you know, how you talk to a crowd, etc. And then after a year or two, <clears throat> you pop out with your little certificate, I'm a Toastmaster like I've got. And, um, you, you, you know, I've seen the, the, the transformation of many of the guys that came there. Um, I needed to 
to discipline myself and to polish myself up, I was never scared. That was never one of my fears as public speaking. Um, so it was really, really interesting to watch how the transformation of many people was in the public speaking to go from what they didn't want all the way through to, you know, a, quite a competent speaker. And it, it's fantastic and it's beautiful to watch. So, yes, it is a true saying, um, but it, it's not clear. It's, it's a lack of clarity in these short quotes that really, really get to me. So, so okay, the objection here is really about the shortness of the quote because it, does, it isn't giving a lot of description. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I, I can understand I, that. Because I, I also can, yeah. I, I can read that quote and I can fill in the blank. And actually, that's kind of what I think uh, memes are about. They're about allowing the person, encouraging the person to who's fill in reading the blanks. Them, to fill in mm -hmm. the blanks. Knowing mm -hmm. that each person is going to fill in the blanks a little bit differently. Dif differently, yeah. And yeah. That, that's actually the good part of, of what a meme does. Um, yeah, is it is it something that could be a little bit more clear? Yeah, it could be more clear, but mm. uh, I'm mm. I'm going to give it more points than you do, I think, because uh, <laughs> no, I, th I think so. And it, you know, Walt, I love that because we're all different. <laughs> we are all different. We are. I'm going to give I'm, it more I'm, points. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little harsh. I really want things clear. That is my real focus in life. I want simplicity. I want clarity. Um, I want everything to have the well, base philosophy. The, the, the I do too. I just think uh, I'm the one who has to make it clear. Yeah. I, I don't expect somebody yep. else to clarify for me. So when I read I, something like that, I, I say to myself, I completely what, what can I do to make that clear? And, and for me, making that clear is pretty simple because I can think of yeah. many, loca many locations, yeah, many situations where I have been trying to get myself past point X, where point X is some point of resistance, some kind of a block, some kind of... Yeah. Uh, of something that, that, for whatever reason, is stopping me, and I'm trying to find a way around it or through it or over it or whatever. And that's when it's most uh, useful for me to remember that yeah, I may be afraid of it, but that's where I'm going to be able to have my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. that, that's, what I, that's what I think of when I read that. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm giving... I'm curious, Quilt. Have, have quotes ever given you a breakthrough? I'm the one who gives myself the breakthrough. What quotes do for me is a good one will help me to feel more confident to follow through and have the breakthrough. So have any quotes helped you follow through to get the breakthrough? That's not what I said. What I said is they will help me feel better about okay. it so I can, have, I can follow through and have the breakthrough. The question is, does it help me feel do you, better? Do you, do you think any quotes have been instrumental, and maybe you have to rephrase it, in... in, in uh, Getting the momentum up to help you break through something. It, to the extent that they help me feel better, yes. But only to that okay. extent. That's what the point of a quote is, I think. A meme. A, a, the mm -hmm. point of a meme is to help me feel better. Because mm -hmm. like Abraham teaches us, when we feel better, that's when we're able to do our best attracting. And we're the ones doing the, track, the attracting. So once mm -hmm. we get to feel better, everything else we're doing ourselves. It's, it's us. And, and it's not doing in the sense of necessarily of going out and doing something. It's an internal doing. But we're the ones who are doing mm. it. You know, uh, a, a quote is, is simply a way of helping us to get started. Just let's just let's just start with this process of feeling better and then getting to the point where we can do the thing we want to do next. So I've been looking at them wrong all my life. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I really, really, really like what you're saying there. Um, and. To be honest, I, I, I think maybe I, I look for too much in a quote. I look, I look for more than it's, it's well, meant to give. You, you look for what you yeah. need to look for. <clears throat> yeah. So let's go to the next one. Let's, let's chat about that. All right. Uh, this is from, let's see, who gave me this one? Siraj gave me this one. Positive energy to your thoughts gives positive results. Negative energy to your thoughts gives negative results. Good. That, that's pointing in, in, in directions which I really like which is very core, and the core thought is thoughts create your reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that is, to me, absolute prime. So I really like that. And I've really liked um, uh, what, what he, the, the quotes that I've seen him put on the, on the Facebook group and the clarity with which he's presented many, many replies to a lot of the questions there. So um, <clears throat> uh, what he's trying to say Again, from a law of attraction point of view, which is very, very accurate, is when you focus on what you don't want, you amplify it. When you focus on what you do right. want, you amplify it. Um, really like that. It's, a, it's very short and it's very succinct and it's very accurate. So, um, you know, you can have short ones that are really accurate. Um, so that one gives me like a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 feeling. Okay, Actually, what, that, not that you mentioned it, one of my favorite quotes of all is three words yeah. long. Oh. It's from Mike Dooley. Thoughts become things. 
Yeah, fantastic. I love that mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what, what did your Ford guy say? He said something. Uh, Henry Ford? Uh, yeah, that's a great quote. Oh, I know which one you're thinking of. Uh, what yeah, was that very quote? Popular. Yeah. Uh, so, somebody will come up with it. Don't worry. We'll move on. <laughs> whether you think you, something like whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way. Can't. You're, you're right. right. Yes. Yeah, something along that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. Exactly. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And I love that one. It's very It's true. Very accurate. It's very true. Yeah. The only thing the only thing I'm not hundred percent sure of is whether Henry Ford actually said it. But other than that, oh yeah, that's really another that, that, yeah, if he stole it or not, that's another point. <laughs> That's, You've been blamed for it, put it that way. <laughs> that's the difficult thing. I mean, half the t- I've learned now, if I see a quote that I like, I have to go look it up and see, is it true? Did somebody actually say that, the way, the per- the way it was quoted, or did somebody make it up? Mm-hmm. Like, there, there was one really great, great quote that came out a few years back. Um, it was about government. Government is not reason. Government is not eloquence. It is force. And like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. It was attributed to George Washington. And it was attributed to him in his second inaugural address. Problem is, he never said it. And if you look at the second inaugural address, it's not in there. <laughs> but other than that, it was a good quote. <laughs> oh, these uh, spinners, eh? They love spinning. Oh, them. yes. It was actually created by the person who attributed it to him in a book of quotes this person put together at the turn of the 20th century. But, you know, other than that, it was a good quote. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being afraid of what would go wrong and start being excited about what could go, I imagine, right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, again. Okay. So you'll see a lot of quotes talk about the contrast, um, and, and, and that's that's cool. Nasha gave us like the, the correct version of that Ford quote. If you think you can or, or can't, either way you are right. I believe that is the original. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Nasha. That's it. That's good. How about you? What's your favorite quote? Do you have any good ones? Uh, illusions. <laughs> illusions. Oh, I love those. Those are great. Argue for your limitations and, and they're, they're yours. yours. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. That's it's probably true. my single most um, short appreciative quote. Of course, there ought to be a way to turn that into a positive. How do you turn that one into something more positive? Because that's arguing for well, what, what's holding that. back. That's a good question. So, argue for your limitations and they're yours. So, argue for your expectations and they're yours that's that's better i like that yeah yeah that's very good now why why we 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 find the negative side of it quite appealing is because humanity's mostly there oh yeah okay argue for your limitations and they're yours is so appropriate for so many people so much of the time oh no kidding argue for you for your expectations and they are there is not necessarily that um often that i could you know use that one succinctly and 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 quickly and easily in the society so But it does have you a benefit. The, be- the benefit is that it makes you, it stops you and makes you think. So many of the memes we, yes. we react to is like, oh yes, yes, that, I, I resonate to that one because I'm so used to the negative. But then we throw something yeah. really positive at ourselves and we think, let's see, is there a trap in here? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, you know, do I have to pay a price for this? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> How many lashes are that? Cat and nine tails, do I need? <laughs> so is this a trick question? <laughs> we are a suspicious lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, until until Abram pointed out with quite a lot of clarity how you can have your cake and eat it, it, it wasn't wasn't necessarily something that, uh, that uh, I believed in at all. What changed? Don't forget you're human. It's okay to have a meltdown. Just don't unpack and live there. Cry it out and then refocus where you are headed. Okay. So I really don't enjoy the statement, you know, to err is human, uh, don't forget you're human, um, you know. It, it kind of, it, it's kind of saying, um, you don't really have to focus on what you want, where you're going, you know, you're just human, you're going to make blunders and it's always going to be wrong or it's often going to be wrong or. Kind of like a bit of an excuse in my mind to, to often put that saying, you know, we're human, we're human, to err is human. So uh, not not hugely fond of that. I can see where it's going. It's not a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay to have a meltdown. Yeah. So it's okay to know what you don't want. It's That's it's a very important point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really, really cool, clear. Um, just don't unpack and live there. So when you know what you don't want, don't stay there. 
Mm-hmm. Good, I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, then refocus on where you're headed. Perfect. So uh, I really like that quote. It's, it's really digging into know what you don't want, know where you're going. So, which is the basics to the physical experience. So, just just to go back to <clears throat> my, my my epiphany that I had was, I always understood as a kid that the contrast in the physical universe was your teacher. So I knew that, you know, without light, there'd be no darkness. Without a, a valley, there'd be no mountain, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I never knew how it transferred into a human. Nobody explained to me with simplicity and clarity what the contrast looks like in a human experience until Abram Hicks said, when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. And that to me, was an absolute utter epiphany of how the contrast mm. manifests in a human's life. Yeah. And I never saw that before. It was a complete blank in my life. I did not see that. I might have had some kind of picture of it, but not with that kind of clarity. It That's true very, for very a lot of Abraham. Picture. I would say probably 70%, 80% of <clears throat> Abraham has that kind of quality for me, of filling in <clears throat> blanks and, and looking at things in ways I'd never looked at before and realizing <clears throat> that it was all true. And being blown away by it. How did I miss that? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's it, it's scarily, scar- scary in its simplicity. And then on one side, it's, it's really understandable why your emotions or your guidance would be hidden from the masses. Mm, yeah. It makes a complete sense to me. But um, uh, Anthony uh, and Astrid, you know Astrid. So sure. um, Jin Jin Jitsu. Yep. Uh, sister-in-law. So, so Anthony and Astrid were, were here ye- yesterday, and um, we, we were having a chat, and we were all getting excited about going on maybe the Alaskan cruise or, or one of the cruises of the Abram Hicks thing. So, uh, it, it it really felt good to chat about and talk about it and see how much it it, it would be to get there and all the you know starting to look at the logistics of it all, which is right. really yeah. really a lot of fun. Mm. That's nice. Very good. I'm thinking about <clears throat> the fact that uh, so many of these memes do have that negative twist to it. I can't remember the one that we uh, repeated a, a little while ago. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Argue for your limitations, and they're yours. And, and we turned it into argue for your expectations, and they're yours. And yeah. I like that one. I, I, I still think there ought to be another one that feels even better than that one. I don't know why I think that, because nothing's coming to mind. But mm. I have been, in a sense, I've been retraining myself. To be more. So the word argue, replacing that word, I think. Yeah, that, focus that's on probably your, it. on your expectations. Focus, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's good. That's a good improvement. Um, yeah. But but I've been noticing that the more that I notice, the more that I pay attention and look for positives and notice how few of them there are, the more I really want them. I, I become yes. quite hungry for them. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. 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 Yes, absolutely. Which is so, interesting. What, what, what's happening, uh, the, the Abram Hicks teaching teachers, is that as you rise up your general vibration, as it rises up the emotional scale, it becomes very painful to, f- to feel the old emotions because it's clearer and stronger when, you, when you're having those negative emotions, um, what actually is happening. And it's not like just in a, in a dull fuzz negative emotion now. It's, it's absolutely, whoa, no, I remember that one. I don't like that. It's really, mm-hmm. really painful. I don't mm-hmm. want to go there anymore. So you start focusing on finding more and more and more words um, that you can use that are really positive, that are really clear, that are really higher on the vibration scale for yeah. you. And everybody's at a slightly different scale. So right. it's mm-hmm. very important for me to really appreciate every individual um, for how far they've expanded mm. because any individual, no matter who they are, where they are at any moment in time, thinks they have the biggest picture they've ever had. Yep. And that needs to be respected. Sure. Okay. And it's not right or wrong. It's, I mean, it is right for them. Um, but the, the, the thing that I enjoy is those individuals who, who are happy to expand just a bit more, expand a bit more. There's some that really want to stay where they are, but there's some that want to expand a bit more. And if they're staying where they are, they're arguing to stay where they are, all right? Often they're discussing concepts of what they believe is right and wrong, okay, which which really helps um, expand. Um, so I've just, just got a, a message on Facebook from Daisy Jopling, who's, the, who, who's quite a famous... Um, um, individual who, who says she's, she's, she sounds amazing that you'll come on the podcast and talk with us. 
and she's become very successful and she, she attributes it to the law of attraction and, and the Abram teaching. So okay. I'm quite excited to, to get her on. We might be able to get her on on next Monday. So. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, um, yeah, she's done very, very well for herself. <clears throat> uh, living in New York and um, comes from the UK. Okay. Yeah, um, looking so, forward to that. So, yeah, that, 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 that to me is um, quite exciting. So... What's another one of your favorite quotes from uh, um, Illusions? From Illusions? Oh. Um, <laughs> but it, I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but it, it's one that stuck with use me. use it or lose it. It, it. it stuck. Well, that's a good one, yeah. No, the one that really stuck with me was everything in this book may be wrong. Yes, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to say that at the end of every podcast, everything I say may be wrong. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, when I read it, it really pissed me off. Like, oh, oh come on, no, just just sell out your entire set of ideas here. That's what it felt like to me when I first read it. Oh, he's giving you the opportunity of endless expansion. <laughs> so the gift of that statement is. I, actually, you've been using the word expansion a few times, and it, it's created a question yeah. in my mind. And I, I think I know what my answer is, but I'm curious to know what yours is. Mm. Abraham talks about expansion a lot. Um, it's a key concept in their overall um, model of how life works. Is contraction ever a part of the equation? Well, you and what know form what you don't want. You're contracting. So contraction is actually something that happens quite a bit. Which is very, very key and the tool we use for expansion. That's the, con uh, the, the contradiction which makes sense when you understand it. So in other words, when you really, really, really have been told that you can't speak to other men and you've got to stay in your room and um, <clears throat> you can't go out and you can't do this. And uh, if you do speak to other people, you get beaten and all those kind of things. Then you really know what you do want, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Then you have a very good idea what you do want. <laughs> you start getting clearer and clearer and clearer what you do want. Hey, you probably want to okay. take, take a stick to the person who wants to beat you, but I understand your point. <laughs> you, what that, you really want going up the emotional scale. <laughs> it is slightly, but it is higher. <laughs> not recommending you not, stay. Not there. recommended. No, not recommended. But, but uh, you need to go through that, maybe. Yes. So, so, so contraction actually well, becomes the basis for massive expansion. Is where I was going with it. Yeah, massive contraction goes into massive expansion. It's kind of like. Uh, building up the, the power of something by squeezing it down and just letting it go, boom, and explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, uh, another, another one in illusions is, you want to know if your mission on Earth is complete, if you're alive, it isn't. Yes, right, yeah. Mm. I'd forgotten that was illusions. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is an illusions quote. Reluctant Messiah. Mm. I love that phrase too. It's not really a quote, but it's a good phrase. A reluctant Messiah. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It isn't a complete thought for me, and it isn't. It, it isn't further enough along the path, so to speak. But at the time that I first read that, it was. It was a phrase that made me feel better because mm. I was still fairly inundated by church, and that was like one of the ways that I felt better about moving away from church. Because when I was moving away from it, I was, I was the only one. I knew of nobody else who was, and that's a fairly lonely place to be. And when you're in that lonely place, you're looking so, for something to kind of reinforce, like, yes, I am on the right track here. I mean, yeah, inside it, I keep feeling it's on the right track, but everybody I know outside is saying, no, 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 no. So, well, from a law of attraction point of view, why do you feel you were the only person doing it? Because in my experience, I was the only one I was seeing who was doing it. What I'm saying, the universal law of attraction brings you what you are putting out. So you, oh yeah. If, if, oh, you mean why did I come to that conclusion you, in the first place? Why, why, why weren't there more people that were around you that were also leaving their religion? Is what I'm trying to ask. Okay, because the law of attraction brings cooperative components and things that are similar. Yeah. Well, I, for one, I didn't understand how the law of attraction. I'd never heard the term law of attraction at that point in my life. It, uh, it that doesn't was, matter. The law of attraction was still working. Yeah. Oh, it was, but I had never even heard of the concept by by label or by description. I had never heard of it. The closest I'd ever heard of was biblical teaching, and the way the biblical teaching was presented was so distorted that I couldn't have got there anyway. So, I mean, it was mm. really outside of my experience to understand like attracts like. I mean, that that was just it wasn't there. I had nothing. Mm. That was feeding me that at all. Um, so uh, how did I end up with, with that particular thought process? Because I believed it. I mean, because I, I had, everybody I knew was in a box. 
in a thought box. In a box, yeah, yeah. They were in a thought box, and in that thought box, none of them were, were growing, none of them were improving. They were all just repeating the same things over and over again, and what they were saying was wrong. And that's everybody mm-hmm. I knew. So I expected that that's the way it was always going to be. And, of course, my ex- expectation proved me right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I had no idea my but, expectation had anything to do with it. But what, what I was pointing out, Walt, is that your vibration, the universal law of attraction, would have been acting on exactly what you were vibrating, yeah? Mm-hmm. So you were vibrating more about the religion than about the clarity of somebody who was very much leaving it. Okay, if you were in the vicinity of the clarity of somebody who was really leaving it, you would have drawn more of those people to you. And that happened to you, I'm guessing, later on down the line, when your vibration was more clear, then you bumped into more people who who were of a clearer vibration of thinking about things that were outside religion, talking about them and experiencing them, and you bumped into the law of attraction, etc. Yeah, that was <clears throat> that was a good thirty years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite some so time. sometimes your vibration does take quite a while to yeah. to actually out, output what you want coming back. And actually along the lines of what we're process. talking about here, Beth Ann is asking a question of you. She's saying, this is my question because I've been very anti-church for about eight years, and I really have only one person, my husband, who is with me on this. That's her question, so to speak. She didn't really actually ask a question with a question mark on it, but she's asking about that. Uh, not so much so, asking you, just what, asking what, yourself, what I'm I finding, think. what I'm finding with the law of attraction group and the law of attraction people is there are many, many out there that are on the fringe of looking to transition from a orthodox religion to something else. Mm. Okay, it's massive, and it's a very difficult transition. The group, which is just thought you've thought often mm-hmm. of. The religion is, is really, really, really powerful. Okay, I mean, it took me years and years and years to um, drop the hold Christianity, Catholicism had on me, mm. and, and it, it wasn't that Catholicism had on me; it's what I had on myself, sure. based on my thought processes of what I thought was the way it was. Yeah. So. Um, it, it's not Christianity's fault. It's my w- w- where my thoughts were fault. And now I have so much respect and time for anybody who wants to belong to anything or believe anything. I really have so much time for anybody who wants to 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 be in Christianity and 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 be happy in it. Mm. Who wants to be in Islam and wants to be happy in it? Who wants to be in Buddhism and be happy in it? The, the mainstream religion. So um, it's now now I'm now now I'm not looking at. Um, I'm not looking at the point of view of which religion are you. Now I'm looking at the point of view of how aligned are you. Mm. And you can be aligned in any of those religions or just leaving the religion, or you can be aligned in following the law of attraction focusedly like I'm enjoying with the Abraham Hicks teachings. Um, So, you know, my my appreciation now is for everybody, no matter what step they are. So, uh, you know, I'd love to talk more about that, as it's a very beautiful topic. The whole the whole process of leaving a religion, all the implications of it, um, the focusing on new beliefs and bringing them into your life and activating them, um, and moving forward and moving forward and moving forward. So, yeah, all of that is beautiful to me. It's, it's stuff I could talk about forever. So, yeah. Beth, Beth Ann gave it. us more uh, input about what it was she was asking. She says, my question was the question that you asked me, Louis, um, that, which is why isn't it that the law of attraction brings more people to you that are of the same mindset? In this case, anti Because you're not a vibrational match. That's a simple answer. That was what I was That's trying it. to say to Walt. Yeah. And it can take years for you to actually mm. output what you, what you actually think you want. Um, right. you know, but you're not, you're not believing it. You're, you're, you're saying, I want to leave the religion, but you're pushing against what you don't want, which means you're activating it. And what, okay, uh, well, so it re- doesn't work. What does work nicely is if you say, okay, um, I'm really going to take this Abraham Hicks teachings. I'm not going to think about anything that I've ever thought of or believed before. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to focus on it, and I'm going to run with it, and I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look back. I'm just going to look forward. I'm just going to look forward. Okay, but it's not easy. People want to dig up the past. They want to dig up what they used to believe and compare it with where they're going, and um, and, and that activates all the um, the vibrations that are all over the place, which are 
going Beth, backwards Beth and is, forwards. So. She's recognizing that, too, because she followed up by saying, maybe saying I am <clears throat> anti-church isn't a good way to word it. So there exactly. is that, that's the path. That's exactly. the exact path that's, right that's there. That's exactly it. Yeah. Exactly. It. And, and if you listen to my wording, I'm saying how much I appreciate and enjoy anybody who chooses to remain and do whatever they want to do mm. means I'm at peace with it. So therefore, I'm not pushing against it. Therefore, I'm not activating it. Therefore, I don't have a, a mixed vibration. I don't have a confused vibration about the whole thing. Therefore, it's not holding me back. And I like that. I mean, the, earlier we were talking yeah. about fault and, you know, who's at fault. And, and one of the key concepts to learn as we're making this kind of transition is to recognize fault has nothing to do with it. It's, it does. The fault is you and your thinking. Nah, there's no fault. <laughs> there, there, there is no. That's that's my point right there. You are making my yeah. point beautifully. That the moment yeah. that we we start holding ourselves accountable in terms of finding fault with ourselves is the moment we're being yeah. hard on ourselves, and that's the wrong thing to do. What we need to do is be easy on ourselves. We need to to let go of all that angst, and the only way to let go of it is to stop beating ourselves up. So it's you know I spend a, a lot point. of time, Walt. A lot of time saying to people, why is it important to be negative? Mm. And until you really appreciate that it is your expansion tool, that you really understand how it morphs from what you don't want into what you want, um, we're not taught. We're taught to push against negativity and depression and, yeah. and rage and angst and frustration. We, we, we're not taught to see it as an expansion tool. We're just not. It's, it's not part of our upbringing. And it's true. One, once people get that, and it's not that easy, okay, and it took me a while. So um, <laughs> is, 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 is the, uh, the amount of appreciation I now have for going through the negative experiences that I have on a daily basis, guys. <laughs> um, you and me it, both. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. No, it, it doesn't. Stops. I wish it did sometimes, but no, <laughs> And it if doesn't. it stops, if you want to know if your mission on earth is complete, if you're alive, it isn't, okay? When you're in True. the contrasting universe, it will remain. You will still, on the cross, when you're about to be crucified, you'll say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, okay? <laughs> All right, you will do that. You will do that. You will still go through negativity no matter how advanced you've become because you're still expanding. You're still expanding. Out of that statement Christ made on the cross came a huge expansion. And, and so it goes on and on and on. And so it is for all of us. Hope that answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> any, more, any more quotes? Any more quotes? Uh, well, actually, there, there have been a couple of quotes. Beth Ann is still typing out her questions so i'm curious to see how it's going to uh oh yeah expand. cool no she, problem she, she's she's part way through so I'll, I'll come back to it later on um yeah the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from enemies it comes from those you trust the most that comes no 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 nobody nobody wants to take uh credit for that quote yeah i, I don't know that one but it does it, it, it has a, a, a nice victimhood to it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it comes from those you trust most. Now, who's the ones you trust most? <laughs> it actually comes from yourself. So, mm. oh, my God, it does come from those closest to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It, it's looking for a betrayal, though. See, that's the thing see quotes like that. I just, what? Does that help anybody? Well, it, the, the, when I when I see that it word betrayal in there, that betrayal word tells me that the person is focused on the betrayal. You know why? Yeah. I trusted this person and they betrayed me, right? That and, and and I'm so let down by it. Their behavior let me down so so deeply and so badly and so strongly. But you know what I love about betrayal, Walt? What is betrayal doing? What what is what is it? What is the gift of betrayal? I give up, Louis. What is the gift of betrayal? <laughs> <laughs> Come, Walt. I thought you knew everything. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm still trying to figure out what the questions are. <laughs> so betrayal is teaching you not to need anything outside yourself to remain happy. Oh, okay. You see, how beautiful is that? When they betray you, they say, don't look outside at me for your alignment. Remain aligned for no reason at all. Take me out of the equation. That actually would have made a good meme, by the way. Beautiful example. That, 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 that little thing that you said there about betrayal, that, that would make a nice little meme. Yeah. That'd be a good one. We can start writing memes. Write them down. Quotes by me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, here we go. Beth Ann has given us a, a nice long one. Well, first I'll, I'll say what Siraj gave us because it's short. He says, my therapist told me, write a letter to the people you hate and burn them. Did that. Mm. But, but now I don't know what to do with the letters. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've got so many of them, have you? <laughs> uh, I, I think you may have skipped a step there, Siraj. You're supposed to burn them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Siraj, think think about that for for, for a second. <laughs> what are they asking you to do? Are they asking you to focus on what you want or what you don't want? Mm. Okay, they're asking you to focus on what you don't want, and when you focus on it, you amplify it. When you amplify it, the universal law of attraction grabs hold of it and brings you more. Helpful or not? Depends whether uh, you're no. focused on the negative or the positive, uh, whether you no. focus on the wants or don't wants. <laughs> okay, if, if they put the clause in, don't spend more than 14 seconds on writing that letter or thinking about it. Then they might have got somewhere and then focus on what you want. <laughs> the, the rocket of desire that comes out of what, you know, when somebody harms you, it wouldn't be nice if people were nicer to me is the rocket of desire. Mm. Or if I was horrible to people, wouldn't it be nice if I was nicer to people? Mm. So don't, 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 don't go around asking for forgiveness. Don't spend time in that. No value. The value is they've already given you the value. The value is you know what you don't want. Now follow the rocket. That's the value. And if you're following that, you're giving back not only to that person but to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But I'm not one to, 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 to jump on the bandwagon of going asking for forgiveness. No. Always Abram by the looks of it. <laughs> uh, something else occurred to me too while you were uh, discussing that, which is there, there is a certain quality – or often lack of quality that I look for in a meme. And the lack of quality is when I see something being given as advice. And the, the wanted quality is when people express what is meaningful to them. Mm. And the reason that's important to me is I find most often that most advice was not asked for and is wrong half the time. So I, I really don't want to hear more advice. <laughs> what I want is to hear what has worked for people. So if, if somebody says, you know, now that could quote be advice. X, quote, well, not necessarily. It depends how it's expressed. If they express it as, depends this, how is, this, is, this is what I found. When I hear yeah. this is what I found, to me, that's something I'm much more interested in paying attention to. The moment I hear somebody say, do this or do that, it's the moment that I kind of shrink back and saying, yeah, okay. Ooh, so how I do can work feel out that, Walt. Believe me, I see that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your back hairs go up and your claws come out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, uh, do I really want to pay attention to this one? <laughs> Not so sure. <laughs> so anyway, Beth Ann gave us her. You, That's what I enjoy about you. <laughs> <laughs> Beth Ann gave us a, a very long description of her question. She says, um, I kept hitting the, uh, the send by accident, so uh, here's what I wanted. I, I would like clarity on this. I've always felt bullied in workplaces. I need to work. We all need money, I suppose. I work for an agency as a nurse, so I do get to pick and choose my assignments mostly. But I always seem to go to places where people are mean and bullies. I want to stop attracting mm -hmm. this. I've been told to love them anyway, but this is so difficult. What do we have to tell Beth Ann? Well, Beth Ann, number one, my wife's a nurse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, good. <laughs> so my, my wife at, at work is called a witch. Oof. Called a witch because whatever she focuses her attention on, she manifests, and they think it's a bit freaky. Um, and that's what you're displaying here, Beth. You're manifesting what you're thinking. So you're, you're, you're a bit of a witch too, so we all are. <laughs> we can't help it because the universal law of attraction will attract to us what we're thinking. You're saying to yourself, you, you've got that active vibration. Um, I always go to places that have bullies or mm. something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
the universal law of attraction feels that because you feel it quite strongly, um, and, and, and it just brings back more of what you want. So you might go to different jobs, different places, different faces, but you take yourself with you. So right. you, you take the I'm, 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 I'm a vibrational match to the bully with you, and off you go, and you go to the new places, and, and of course the act of vibration will bring the person who's maybe not even a bully very much of the time, almost none of the time, will start being a bully around you because you're the act of vibration. And, and they feel it, and they're just playing the game that you're asking them to play. Um, and they come to you, and they're a bit angry, frustrated, or, or, or want to lash out. And then when the other person who's in a very aligned vibration next to you, they go to them, they, they'll react to them completely differently. And when you start seeing that clearly in your work, how somebody, you know, you might not have somebody who's too aligned at work, but, um, <laughs> you know, if you do, you, you will see that they, they never seem to get any shit from anybody. I mm. just don't. I mean, nobody gives me shit. Nobody. I mean, it hasn't done for years and years and years and years. I haven't had nightmares for years and years and years and years. All, all these things start going. They just vanish. They just... It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Only Walt gives me troubles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I provide that, play that role for you. You try. Yeah. I, I'm, you try. I'm, I'm, if I'm I allow you to, to you, you will. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm a vibrational match. That's right. <laughs> so it, it's very important to understand um, that, that you are doing this to yourself. Uh, very brutal, some people would say, and you can't say that to people, but... Uh, I, I just give people the truth straight up. Um, it's simple. It's the way it is. Um, and and you you can't jump to, I'm always going to have nice people in a happy place. Jump to, wouldn't it be nice if I sometimes had mm. less, uh, a, a nicer environment to go to? Right. W- wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Just write that down and, and, and start getting into the feel that, you know, this is something I can believe. I can really believe that I can start manifesting a few more places that are, just a bit nicer, just a bit nicer, just a bit nicer. I, I, I'm sure I can manifest that. It's not, it's not a big stretch, not a big jump. It's, it's just gen- generally negative. And, and I can go there and I can feel vibrationally comfortable with that statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you build up. And when you're spending a little time in that, it'll be easier to jump to, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if um, it often happened now? Because mm-hmm. it's happening quite often, but it, it can happen a little more often, and I'm sure of that. And, and uh, you know, I understand the universal law of attraction. So the more I get into a happy place before I go to work, mm. and I don't w- worry about anything, and I just let things unfold because I know my vibration is going to manage unfold it in any case when I when I'm doing. And then um, I'll I'll go and do that. But um, I think the hour is up because something's beeping. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, and and then you'll start going to generally positive. So generally positive would look like ah, oh, you know now. Um, I, I've had some great, great times with some great people, and, and I'm really going to focus on on, on those. Um, they call them bank, bank. Uh, w- when you get different nursing jobs at different places, they call it the bank staff. So um, when when I get different bank jobs at different places, and, and, and you know it's been working quite well now, and, and I can really see that happening more often now. Mm. And then you you move up to to the place where. It's not even an issue. I always get nice places, I always get nice people, and everything always works out for me. And I know that now with clarity. Mm. And, and you start living it and feeling it, and it really feels good. So, you know, it's, like, it's so cool. It's like, I don't know why I ever had the problem with that in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I especially like the last sentence that she wrote. She says, I've been told to, quote, love them anyway, unquote, but this is so difficult. And that actually fits the topic. She was a little worried this was not really part fitting our topic, but I think it actually does because I've seen memes that say something to the effect of love them anyway. And I think it's a flawed meme. I think what the meme should say or would be better saying perhaps is um, I've been told to love what I would like them to be anyway. I would, I would change that, change it to how do I want that person to behave toward me? How do I want that person to be? What, what, what kind of person am I looking for? So it's not love mm-hmm. who they are right now. I don't have to love who they are right now, the way they are. How about loving them the way I would like them to be? How about changing in my mind what kind of behavior pattern I can expect from them? Well, do you, do you know what I see is the flawed premise here? Okay. Okay. The flawed premise is, and it's with a lot of quotes, okay? I, you're over here negative, and I want you to go over here. Love them. 
I hate them, but I lo- love them. Okay. So the distance between here and here is too far. It's not necessarily inaccurate. It's accurate once you've built up that vibrational scale. And it's also not true because when you're happy, you're going to draw the happy people to you. So you're not even going to get them. So it's not like you're changing them or you're loving the horrible people. It's you're nice and now they, you're attracting the nice people and game over. But you're not pushing them away and you're not loving them or anything. It's just that you're now a loving, nice person to your whole self and to the universal law of attraction and it's feeling it and it's just bringing back the loving, nice people to you. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's not something I'd focus on loving them. It's, 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 it's not the way it works. The way it works is you change yourself, then the appropriate people at the appropriate timing happens. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what's um, so cool when, about When you it. understand the law of attraction, when you understand that, it's like, oh my gosh, okay, all right, I really do create my own reality. Mm-hmm. That's what it's saying to me. Right. And I, I I'm really going to focus on where I'm going, not where I am. Mm-hmm. I'm going to focus where I'm going. I know where I am. I'm not, I'm not even going to look at it. I, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be just a little more positive, a little, a little more focused on, on, on going generally negative. Going, wouldn't it be nice if more people were nicer to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, simple. When, when, uh, whenever there's somebody in my life who is behaving toward me in a way I don't like, this is like my first go-to place. What way would I prefer? Not with the expectation necessarily that by thinking that I will change them, but rather with the expectation that if I focus on what I would prefer instead of what I've been getting, one of two things will happen. Or maybe actually Mm -hmm. both of them could actually happen. One possibility is that that other person will be influenced by my more positive thought and decide to behave more positively toward me, which is great. That would be wonderful. I would like that. Mm -hmm. But even if they don't, just by focusing on what it is that I do want, what, what, on, uh, you know, what behavior am I looking for instead, just by focusing on that, I will, like you said, attract more people like that. And if this particular person who isn't treating me the way I want to be treated and is, doesn't match up with this new vibration I'm putting out, they'll just go away. So either way, mm-hmm. I win. Either yeah. they modify their behavior and they stick around. Or they mm-hmm. don't modify their behavior and go away, and I get other people who do match the behavior I'm looking for. That's win, win, win. I mean, I've taken so many times people, and I've, I've talked to them about their terrible bosses, and I've said to them, find something you love about them. And if they can do that, if they have been able to do that, they said, I just can't believe it. The guy's responding to yeah. me so completely different. I just mm-hmm. don't understand. It. How, 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 did, how did that happen? Yeah. And I said to them, what were your thoughts about them? Oh, I started thinking more positive things. I liked the tie. I liked the smile. I liked, you know, the fact that, um, you know, they were kind to another person. Or, you know, they started finding something they liked. And they just started focusing on that and only on that and only on that and only on that. Left the rest out. Right. And then you're not a vibrational match and they can't access your space. I keep on trying to explain to people that the law of attraction, when it's used correctly, when you're outputting positivity, you can't get negativity come through that shield. It's like a force field. It is. And it's the negative force field that works exactly the same way. When you're negative, that force field only allows in the negative. That's right. It's exactly <laughs> right. So yeah. if you understand it, you, you have the ability to create your reality with your own force field and protect yourself from everything and anything by not protecting yourself, by just focusing on what you want. And part of it's understanding clear, it. Being, it by think, putting out to the universal law of attraction the positivity, and it'll just bring it back. Part of it's understanding it, and part of it's remembering it, especially when you're in that negative place. Remembering, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, how I shield yeah. myself. Yeah. I remember, Walt, this, this is funny. Jennifer, my mentor, once said to me, uh, but Louis, you need to practice. 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 <laughs> practice. 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 I sense the theme here. She went on for half an hour. I said, okay, John, got it, I 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 got it. I got it, I got it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it was a great experience for me. I really enjoyed that. It really helped shift shift something in me. It was really good one. Absolutely. Well, this has been, we, we finally actually did use up the hour, but this has been very good. Good topic, I like. The idea of going over memes like this has given us uh, some interesting hey. perspective on this. So thank you for bringing that up. And thank you to our listeners as well. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great one.